Hi guys, I'm the Home Distiller and uh, today we're in the shed and I'm going to talk about my little solar setup that I've uh, almost completed. I've still got a few bits and pieces to come in and uh, an idea for solar regulators that I think should come as not standard but an, an easy option. Um, which is a, a diversion um, setup. So when your batteries are charged, um, it's instead of just regulating your solar panels down to 13.8 and floating, being able to switch some of the power or some of the panels over to something else automatically, whether it's a, um, a grid tie inverter or a um, uh, if you've got a biogas digester, methane digester, to um, keep it warm so you can have a warming element in that, um, or a, um, what else could it be used for, uh, make hydrogen, uh, there's all kinds of bits and pieces that it could be used for, and you can hear my setup in the background is clicking away, which is uh, what it does because I've set it up with a relay, so let's um, get into it. So this is my solar panel, oh, my charge controller panel and uh, grid tie inverter, cheapo Chinese grid tie inverter. I haven't got a watt meter yet, it's in the mail. Um, so at the moment I've cut the dodgy lead that they give you um, and put on a little cheapo clamp on meter which doesn't really measure high enough, sorry, low enough. Um, so what we've got in the box here, this is a kit, the, the internals is a kit from a, a website called Oatly Electronics. Um, it's actually designed for a wind generator. It doesn't actually regulate the voltage per se, it just doesn't let your batteries over voltage. As you can see the two LEDs clicking from charging to charged. And my voltage is at 13.6 and when it reaches 13.55 which it will in a second. I'll have a while that's clicking away. I've got a negative bus bar and a positive. There we go. It just clicked over to charging. And you notice the voltage gets up to about 14.4 14 14 or 14.35, something like that, that I've got it set to. There we go, 14.4. And then once it hits 14.4, it clicks over to charge and disconnects the um, solar panels from it. So basically it's a pulse charger, um, but it doesn't let the cells over voltage. As they creep up, it lets them creep up and then cuts them off um, when they hit the set voltage. Uh, I've got a little switch on there to turn my meters on and off, because they do draw a little bit of power. Um, this is a modified... Um, little cheapo um, amp meter. It was originally a 10 amp meter and I put a new shunt on it and um, turned it into a center type. I'll just zoom in on that for you. Which you can see it's uh, reading zero at the moment because it's not charging, it's disconnected, so this is basically in and out of the batteries. As I um, charge, the needle will actually drop down, um, and then as I draw, the needle will move up. I'll just uh, flick on the CB, and you can see she's drawing the needles the needle's gone up a wee bit on there. So if I hit transmit, you can see the needle move and it's clicking on an awful lot more now as it's keeping the battery topped. So, and the idea is I do actually have, I have a 120 watt panel. Let me just widen that out again. I have a 120 watt panel um, on the roof and a small 20 watt panel 
and I will be getting a normal charge controller which will be hooked onto the 20 watt panel which will keep the batteries at float thereby stopping it from clicking on and off. It will click on, charge them with the 14.4 and then once they're charged it will turn off and let the small panel float. So while, when it actually clicks off here to charge, like that, it switches it over to this grid tie inverter which uh, is currently producing about 200 milli milliamps at 250 volt. Um, so it works, it works not too badly, but I think it should be a standard thing. When your batteries are charged, why waste what your solar panels can do? So your batteries are charged, what if you want to do something else with the power? So we'll open this up. Disconnect my small panel from here for a second. Now, inside, get you a better view. Okay, because this is actually set up for a wind generator. I actually have a three phase regulator in here which um, currently isn't being used, it's just for the, uh, the diode in it. There's my relay that switches between, which is actually quite warm. It's a little bit worrying. See how that goes. But that actually switches between the um, inverter and the batteries. Surprise, it's, well it's not, it's, it's warm to the touch, so I'll have to keep my eye on that. Um, this is the actual charge controller, here. And nothing's warm on that, which is good. This is the meter um, controller. This green wire here is the shunt for the um, digital meters. And, uh, I'll give you a look at it. There's my my shunt. I cut the shunt off that's inside and uh, put my own on the back. So that's brought that up to a 50 amp meter. I think it was 50 in total. Um, so that's that jobby and. Uh, Here's my little grid tie. Just flicked over and it just flicked off again. Well, I need to get the float charger because at the moment it's doing lots of flicking on and off, flicking on and off. Whereas once I get the uh, float um, charger installed, it shouldn't do any flicking. The little 20 watt should be able to keep it at a stable voltage and stop it from clicking back and forth. So if I just grab a, a um, clip lead, I can find one. And I'll just clip my little 20 water onto that. So say so if I had it clipped on there like that, it should keep it uh, at float, which will allow the grid tie to do its thing just like that but um, currently that will probably slowly over charge my batteries so as well as that I've got uh, a thousand watt pure sine wave inverter don't really need pure sine wave out here but um, I've got this um, power board attached to it and another meter here that I've um, put a I actually used the leads the leads run direct from the batteries I've got a 70 a 65 amp hour and 324 I think amp hour batteries they're a donation they're not the happiest batteries in the world but 
the application I want, they'll do me nicely. They were free, so I'm happy with that. I do want to get some wet cells just because they handle a higher charge voltage a lot nicer, like uh, voltage variations. Um, so yeah, I used the actual leads that came with the inverter as the shunt for the meter with a bit of playing and an internal resistor inside the meter which has actually brought that meter up to not 5 amp as it says but 50 if I just flick that on there's a soldering iron attached to that at the moment so we're drawing about 6 amps I'll just flick that off let's see it got dropped down to idle which is about an amp and she pulses around a bit as we get voltage that's strange why have I started click oh okay yeah good point that's why I started clicking up there because I turned that on so at the moment she does a bit of clunking back and forth, back and forth, which is um, something I'd like to try and remove. Um, but um, the other thing is the grid tie, it's a little bit big for the single panel I've got in there, so it does a lot of this kind of fiddling around trying and trying and it doesn't quite lock in sometimes so I want to get some more panels as you can see oh, that's it locks in for a second and then drops out so she's not it drops the voltage too much um, so I think with another panel or a smaller inverter I think I'm going to go the other panel route rather than spend money on another inverter when I've already got one that seems to work unlike this piece of crap which is a um, power jack one didn't work as soon as I got it um, seems to work for a couple of seconds and then shut off no matter what kind of current you are supplying it so don't buy the power jack ones they're a piece of shit so um, we'll go outside and have a look at the panels on the roof it's nothing too exciting but um um, we'll go have a look see anyway. So we're outside on a beautiful summer's day, oh sorry, winter's day. Um, beautiful clear blue sky, so I've got the best sun I've had in quite a while. Um, there's my two panels at the moment. There's the little, uh, 100 and, uh, sorry, 20 water on the end, which is also my camping panel. And there's my big 120. Um, I've got room for expansion on my frame. Um, so what will happen is that one there will probably get pushed down to the end. Um, and there'll be two more panels put in. Um, and the little guy will be mounted on another little frame up the top, I think. Because I want to be able to take him off when I... Um, go camping and that kind of stuff I or when I go in the four wheel drive camping just so I can get my batteries topped. Um yeah. Uh, this may be some of the battery system that I've got at the moment maybe being diverted to the caravan and um, which I haven't got at my house at the moment, it's at my parents but I'll have to get that fixed up. So uh there my my little system. At the moment my wires are kind of dangling down a bit which this um, uh, was actually on the other side of the shed roof but as you can see that big tree there is casting a lot of shade on it so I just moved it this morning and um, got a lot more output now as you can see it's just a little wooden frame with some wire to tie it to the roof so it's blow away. So probably attached to the board I will um, the 
there'll be a few more bypass switches and this kind of stuff where I can run um, as you noticed before when I was using the um, uh, inverter that it does a lot of clunking back and forth because it's generating a little bit more and charges the batteries and clunks on and off so what I'll probably do with that is put in a um, a proper solar regulator so it um, when I'm using it and that kind of thing I can flick a switch and it switches in the proper regulator which allows it to well stop clunking back and forth um, but I think it will work out quite well um, most of the time it will be attached to the grid tie which I do have a proper system on my house so in Australia these these grid tie inverters are not legal um, and uh, in order to sell back to the power company you need um, a proper certified installation etc etc um, I have that I have a thousand watt um, system on the roof and a proper grid tie inverter this is just a little bit of extra um, <coughs> to keep my shed in uh, off grid really if I can um, and uh, just to give a bit more um, extra back into the grid see if I can get a bit more money out of it if I can get another uh, I'm thinking of buying another 220 watt panels so that'll bring me up to 360 watts I mean if I can put three, another 300 watts back into the grid I'm, I'm happy with that um, so that's all from me the home distiller thanks for watching